This is young Katie, my granddaughter. She is six. Her seventh birthday is in a few weeks. In 2020, a date which is a benchmark for global warming, she will be 20, probably still a student. And in 2050, the other benchmark date, she will probably be a grandmother herself, hopefully not worrying too much about the future of her grandkids from global warming. But today it is her mother who has to worry about the rising cost of food, a result of the drought which is probably linked to global warming. Agriculture is not just by far the largest user of water at some 70%, but also a significant contributor to carbon emissions. But if we were to change our agricultural practices, we could grow crops with much less water and actually capture carbon while we are growing food. Katie and I will show you how to grow vegetables with a lot less water and capture carbon using the wicking worm bed system. The basic principles can be applied to large-scale agriculture. The method of application would be very different with large-scale machinery laying underground pipes with water controlled by intelligent computers using soil moisture and other sensors, but the basic principles still apply. The widespread adoption to change our growing system will come from community pressure for action. People power. Your adopting the wicking bed system will give you more than fresh vegetables on your doorstep. By showing how it works to your friends, it will be creating this people power for change. This is a conventional pot with drainage holes in the bottom. Millions in use around the world. The established standard. This is young Katie, my granddaughter. She wants to make a box so she can grow her vegetables. If she followed the conventional way, she would simply drill some holes in the base, fill with soil, put in her seeds and water with a watering can. But I have shown her a better way. A way that will save a lot of water, help the plants to grow better and save a lot of work. So she has made her box a different way. She has not drilled any holes in the base just one hole in the side of the box near the top. She has placed a pipe in the bottom of the box and now waters by pouring water down the pipe. A bit different you may say, but not such a big deal. But what we are really looking at here is a totally new way of growing plants. Not just limited to growing a few vegetables, but one that could affect our entire system of agriculture. We may hear about global warming but my time of life it is unlikely to have a major physical impact on me. OK, I listen to all the arguments and denials from both sides, but it is a theoretical debate. But Katie here is six, going on seven, and global warming is going to have a profound effect on the quality of her life. At this moment, the world has an abundance of food. Water shortages, or more precisely rainfall variability, will make it more difficult to produce food. The wicking worm bed system provides four ways of ameliorating the effect of global warming. First, it uses much less water than conventional irrigation. There is no loss of water beyond the root zone and surface evaporation is virtually eliminated. Secondly, it stores much more water, so extending the time between irrigations. This is obviously very convenient for the grower but in terms of water usage it means that the probability of rainfall falling before irrigating is needed is increased. Third, plants are absorbing carbon dioxide from the air. In conventional agriculture much of this carbon is lost back to the atmosphere and in some cases where the soil is heavily worked even existing carbon in the soil is lost. The wicking worm bed system actually harvests carbon and traps it in the soil. And lastly, this carbon trapped in the soil is improving soil fertility, so increasing food production. The principle is very simple. The vegetables grow in vermicast, worm castings, which are continuously generated by growing worms fed from an organic waste in an above ground container, while maintaining moisture by water wicking up from a reservoir below. All very simple, but there are a few tricks to making it work. This transparent box enables us to see what is happening in the soil. Let us look what happens when we use conventional irrigation technology such as a sprinkler or a watering can. At first we just moisten the top layer. If we were to start watering now all that water would be lost by evaporation without doing any good. 
Typically, all rains less than 10 millimetres are totally lost. As we apply more water, the top layer of soil becomes saturated and the water moves deeper into the soil. This water is useful. At some point, the water will find a fissure or weakness and will percolate deeper without properly wetting the soil. The water passes beyond the root zone without doing the plant any good. We need a new and better way to irrigate. Opportunity, opportunity is knocking at your door. Katie and all her friends will want to enjoy the benefits of modern life, just like I have. Plenty of food, cars, travel, etc. But her future is threatened by global warming. How can wicking beds help? Wicking beds clearly help with the impact of less reliable rain. They produce better quality food with less water, they store more water, extending the time between irrigations and will directly help with the drier climate with periods of heavy rain. But there is another, maybe even more important factor. No one knows whether world leaders will be able to cut down on carbon emissions. But for Katie to enjoy a modern lifestyle, we need a way of removing carbon from the atmosphere. Current agricultural technology is contributing to carbon emissions. We are essentially mining the carbon in the soil which is released into the atmosphere. Modern agriculture produces vast amounts of waste organic material which eventually end up in the atmosphere. Now just think about the side effects of wicking beds. Waste organic matter is trapped in the soil and protected from oxidation by the dry surface crust. The crust protects both the carbon from oxidation and the water in the soil from evaporation. If we could convert much of our large-scale agriculture to use the principles of the wicking bed, millions of tons of carbon would be removed from the atmosphere in the process of growing our food. <laughs>